Uh, hi, this is my testimony on how I was fully convinced that I wanted to step out into the Christian life and continue. So, for, I've been a missionary for two years now. My first mission trip was last year, 2018, in Tobago. And before that mission trip, I was not really thinking, well, I still was coming to church. I somewhat enjoyed it, but as soon as the sermon done, I was ready to go. I was not really involved in joining the activities or anything that they had there for the youths. So before I could go to mission, a sermon was assigned to me. And before, like, before I could even, I didn't even read through the entire sermon. I just read the first page and I was like, nah, the sermon is not for me. This, this is not my kind of sermon. So, for two weeks straight, I had the sermon just sitting there. And then my contingent leader, my missionary leader, she came to me, she's like, you ain't read that sermon yet? You know, it's time to get your legs. And I was like, oh gosh, I will read the sermon. So, I was uh, a week before, actually three days before I had to go to the leave for mission. So I sat there, I was like, you know what, let me read through this. So I read through this and I was like, you know what, this is actually kind of connected. But I still felt as if though I could not connect with this. Or I just felt as if though it was not something I could do. So when I got the mission, still had a thing, I didn't even know the introduction of the sermon. I to tell you how bad it was. So let's have it there. When it's time now to have sermon practice for the night when I was supposed to preach, I don't. I now looking to you know learn something. I now looking to learn the introduction. I only know the title. He came to say the cat is free. That all I could say. And then my um, the the leader of the of the missionary group. She was like, you can't preach because. You don't know the sermon, and maybe for another time, maybe next year. And I felt really disappointed. I ain't gonna lie. I was so a cry. I went to the bathroom and I cry. I admit it. I'm not afraid to admit it. So, and that day I realized, you know what? This happened for a reason. Why I? Why should God accept me just giving Him an ounce of my talent, an ounce of me trying? Why should I give Him halfway? That's disrespectful, and I realized that preaching his word is a privilege, and it's not to treat it as if though it's just some event or some act that you can do, not no play, it's preaching. And so that really sat with, sit with me, and I reflected on that. And I said, all right, next year for sure, then catching my off guard, I can preach. So next year come along, Impact Guyana, I got my sermon. I was like asking, Auntie Lavon, with this sermon, with this sermon, how come it didn't come yet? She's like, calm down, it's coming. <laughs> so I got it like um, a week before mission. Two weeks. Two weeks, a week. It was a week. It was a week before mission. I got it a week before mission. As soon as I get it in my hand, I was like, yes. I started learning it. I went through it all the time. Around that time, I was getting some serious toothaches. When it would wake me up in the middle of the night, that's when I would use that time to go over it. I was going through it all throughout the day, whether it be day, night, evening, I was going through it. And I felt like, yes, I'm confident now, I can do this. So when I got there in mission, I still had some PTSD <laughs> from sermon practice. I was like, you know, maybe I can't do this, maybe, you know. Maybe it's not like maybe I'm not as good as I thought. When it comes time to, to um, practice it in sumo and practice and move us, I could barely say it and I calmed on myself. And then I saw like other missionaries who were doing preaching. They seemed to be on a whole grand level of me. I feel like I couldn't touch them. I felt spiritually incompetent. And then it had a devotion on one of the mornings. And it spoke about how. We don't feel as if though we are good enough to do God's work. We feel spiritually incompetent. And that a lot of times as people, as Christians, we search for the glory. We are spending all our lives searching for the glory, but we already have the glory. And that really sat with me and that gave me the courage. So 
when it came that day, I was calm, just practicing. I got myself together. I was like, all right, now I can preach it. And from at least from what I heard, I did well. I wasn't as nervous as I was. It was just simple. But the thing is, I didn't feel as if though I was fully ready. I didn't feel as if though I was truly convicted. I heard many other people, many other Christians talking about being redeemed and delivered and all how they feel as if though nothing could touch them and oh, they have no fear and they can continue in Christian life. But I wasn't totally sure yet. I was not sure if maybe I was not sure if this was real. It just seemed as if it was impossible that this cruel world could have a God that, you know, all merciful to me. It didn't seem as if the God was as merciful as people making him out to be. I did not fully trust or believe in him. And morning, morning. Morning. And, and while going in mission, I was, you know, beginning to understand God more, but I wasn't fully convinced. Even when I preached, I wasn't fully convinced. So I spoke with a friend of mine who was eating in the horns, talking, just talking about God. And I, ex I explained to him how I felt, and he was like, you know what? A lot of times, us Christians think being redeemed or delivered is some grand moment. You know, a dove will come out of heaven and rest on your hand, and it will be this grand light. But in reality, haven't you realized you haven't been doing the things that you used to do before? Haven't you? Don't you feel a bit different? And I answered, yeah. But he was like, then you've already been redeemed, you have already been delivered. So what, why are you searching fit for? And that hit me hard. Those few words, that, those few sentences literally changed my life. I had a whole new different outlook on Christianity. I had a whole new sense of confidence in myself. It was amazing after when I got home, I like got back into contact with all my friends. I was telling them, hey girl, you know what? I find Jesus. I was, I was like, you know what? It's actually good. Like, I wish y'all could come and join. I want y'all to come and join ESI. I want y'all to come and join Mission. I want y'all to come into church because all my friends, they're going through tough times, who going through depression. I mean, young people, oh, you say we might not be working, but that ain't stopping us from feeling sad. We are going through our own struggles, and you can't just downplay them. And I was telling them, you know, to join, because before mission, I didn't have that much confidence in myself. But the people around me, they helped nurture me, they helped teach me new things. And it's fellow youths who are helping you. It's not just the adults, it's really the youths that are helping you. So that's my testimony on how I was truly convicted that I wanted to be a Christian. And I implore you to join ESI, Mission 2000 and Beyond. It's a youth missionary group. Um, we have missionary groups all in Trinidad, Tobago, Jamaica, Guyana, Barbados, all over the Caribbean. We even have missionaries from Venezuela, Panama, Suriname, and America. So I implore you to join because it really is worth it. It's just, it's just amazing.